from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. I want to say good morning and welcome to How to Apply to job for Jobs at the Library. My name is Jewel Baldwin. I'm a staffing specialist here at the library. And we're going to talk to you about how to apply for jobs at the library. Okay? Our objectives today are, is to learn how or prepare to apply, navigate through USA Jobs and Monster, uh, responding to KSA knowledge, skills, and abilities, writing narratives for those KSA multiple choice and statements, and answering any questions you may have. First of all, we want to talk about how to apply. It's very important that you read all the instructions that are listed on how to apply. Many of you may be familiar with the process, but you may not be familiar with it. You're required to apply online. We do not accept hard copies, emails, or mail documents. The application must be completed before the vacancy cl uh, closing date. And let me say to you, please do not wait until the last minute to apply for the job. The system was shut down at 11.59 and you can be in the system and still keep typing away, completing your application, but even though you may submit it, it will be viewed as incomplete when we receive the application in Human Resources, okay? The next thing I wanna talk to you about is for you to build a resume. And when I say a resume, I mean a customized resume or a resume that you're gonna customize for each job that you apply for. In other words, I want you to build a resume that includes your entire work history, your experience throughout your entire work history, okay? Um, and you're gonna use that customized, rec you're gonna use that customized uh, resume to build or customize a resume for each specific vacancy that you apply for. You can build up to five resumes in USA Jobs. One of those resumes is gonna be like your curriculum vitae, which is going to include everything that you've done in your entire work history. Okay. You're going to look at the vacancy announcement. Most people look at the vacancy announcement, they look at the title, they look at the money, and they look at the location. Those are not the key factors that you need to be concerned with. What you need to look at first and foremost are the duties. In the vacancy announcement, there's an abbreviated version of the position description that only lists partial duties that are required for you to perform the job successfully. So what you should do is you should go into the vacancy announcement and get the position description number, okay? Call down to customer service in LM107 and ask for a copy of that position description. And the reason I say that, most people have a perception of what they think the job entails, but the position description will outline all the major duty areas that you'll need to perform successfully. So that's why it's important that you get the position description Read it thoroughly before you begin to apply for the position, okay? <coughs> the next thing you wanna look at are the qualifications that you're gonna be evaluated against. They're in the vacancy announcement and they are usually indicated under qualifications required. There are usually maybe six to eight KSAs that you'll have to respond to. The KSAs that have the double asterisks are very important, they're considered critical. Monster does not look for keywords. There's no screening out. So we use the KSAs as a screen out for um, the process once we begin to, once we begin to evaluate your application. The critical competencies or screen outs are indicated by a double asterisk, okay? Once you get the position description, then what you wanna do is read the position description and then based on that curriculum vita that you have, you're gonna use that resume that has your extensive work history in it to customize your vacancy for that specific, uh, um, to customize your resume for that specific vacancy. What happens is a lot of times we see hundreds of applications and people submit the same application for the same job or for similar jobs or different jobs and it's not customized. The selection panel and the interview panel is not gonna look for the knowledge, skills, and abilities that you need to be considered successful in performing the job. So it's important that you customize your resume for each specific vacancy that you apply for. And you wanna customize it based on the duties that are outlined in the position description. Okay, 
also in the vacancy announcement, there's an area that talks about preview questions. Those are the knowledge, skills, and abilities that you're going to respond to when you apply online. I suggest that you go in and print out those preview questions. It'll list all the KSAs that you have to respond to and what the multiple choice selections are for you to pick. And you should pick a multiple choice selection that's an indication of your education and or experience. So go in, print out the preview questions, and put the preview questions and your responses in a Word document. Um, in your text box for each multiple choice that you have to select, you have to write a short narrative or justification to show the relevance between what you selected and what you bring to the table in terms of the necessary knowledge, skills, and abilities. The text box only allows you to input eight, up to 8,000 characters. So if you prepare your answers in advance, put them into a Word document, you can do the word count and then make sure that you have 8,000 characters. And then all you have to do is cut and paste and put your responses when you apply online. So as I said, take your responses, put them in a Word document, do the word count, and then cut and paste. And it's very important, like I said before, to prepare and uh, your responses before you apply online. That way you get an op opportunity to review, maybe share your responses with someone else, and make sure you've been very inclusive about what you include in your narrative. Once you've prepared your responses in Word, then you're going to go back to USA Jobs, and then you're going to click the button that says apply for the position and it's going to um, take you to the library's <coughs> application system, which is Monster. <coughs> At that point in time, you're going to upload that customized resume that you prepared for that specific vacancy. It's going to be attached to your application. <coughs> so next, I want to talk a little bit about preparing those KSA responses. Okay. The KSA responses should be written in a form that shows your work history, your education, and your experience that relate or match the KSA multiple choice selection that you picked. Employers don't have a crystal ball, so it's your opportunity to, to talk about all the great things that you've done as it relates to the knowledge, skills, and abilities. You have a way to be able to toot your own horn. In society, we're basically taught that we need to be humble about what we've done. When you're getting ready to apply for a job and when you're on an interview, it's not the time to be humble. So don't exaggerate your education experience or work history, but talk about all the things that you have done as it relates to <coughs> the KSAs. You also want to describe what you've accomplished in terms of your, what you write in your narrative, and you want to talk about how it improved the organization's operation or mission. You begin to write your narrative, as I said before, you want to show the relevance between your multiple choice selection and what you include in your text box. <coughs> the narrative shows or provides evidence or documentation of what you've done in terms of how you qualify for the position. You want to use different and strong action words. In the English language, one word can mean have very different meanings depending upon the context that is used. So we have a list of action words that we will send to you that you can use that are broken down by categories in terms of communication, managerial, financial, all types of action words that you can use that will show what you've done in a great deal, but in terms of minimizing the number of, of words that you use. For example, you may say that you gathered information, okay, but better yet, maybe what you did is you compiled information Okay, maybe you did research of data that you analyzed and then you compiled into data and maybe prepared it in a report or gave it to someone else to share. So the type of words that you use are very strong in terms of the verbs that you use and the action words that would define specific experience, skills, and accomplishments. Okay. You want to use concrete um, examples of your successes and you want to be able to paint a picture of the aspects of the job that you perform and how well you perform the various aspects of the position. You want to hit them with your best shot, okay? Readers have a tendency to, rem to remember what they read first. So you want to 
outline or highlight the things that you've done in terms of your best accomplishments and your best credentials in your narrative first. Okay. You want to start by talking about a career overview or job uh, overview that concisely details your relevant credentials, okay. what you've done, how you've done it, and the impact it's had on the organization or the mission. And you want to emphasize any recent achievements that you may have accomplished. You want to be able to say maybe some of the same things, but in a different manner. For example, if you're new to the workforce, you may have very maybe few accomplishments that you've uh, accomplished over time. However, if you're a seasoned employee and you've been in the workforce for a while, you may have various or several topics or projects that you can talk about or achievements. So in the narrative, you want to talk about the specific goal and a problem that you solved. It's okay to use one example or one project or one functional aspect of a job, but just talk about the different parts of that job that you perform as it relates to the KSA that you're responding to. If you have several different topics, projects, or accomplishments or achievements that you've had, then you want to use various and different types of accomplishments for different types of KSAs that you're responding to. Because you want to be able to paint a picture of all the things that you've done. So if you talk about a, a variety of things that you perform, then it gives a broader perspective of what you've done and what you bring to the table, okay? You may want to talk about, or should I say when you do your narrative, you want to include the components of STAR. And so you're going to ask me, what's the STAR concept? In your narrative, you want to talk about the situation or task that you performed, okay? What happened? What was the experience as it relates to the KSA? Then you want to talk about the action. What did you do or what did you say as it relates to the situation or the task? And ultimately, what you also want to include, which we oftentimes forget, is the result or the outcome. If you can include the major con the, if you include the concepts of STAR when you write your narratives, you'll have all the necessary and pertinent information that the interview panel or selection committee may need to evaluate how well you can perform the job and the various aspects of the job. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.